Hey guys, in today's video I would like to show you um, my editing routine or my um, general workflow behind my deep sky images. Um, for an example, I will use the, my latest image on the Iris Nebula that I took a few days ago with my little 80mm refractor and my Sony A7S. Um, as you can see here, this is a 300 second single exposure. and I, in this video I will show you um, my general workflow and processing behind uh, the image on AstroPixel processor. Then I will move on to PixInsight with the image that I got from AstroPixel processor. And then after PixInsight I will do final tweaks and adjustments in Photoshop. So okay, as I said, this is one single exposure of uh, 300 seconds ISO 1600 and you can already see a lot of dust lanes, dark dust lanes in this image, which is pretty insane to be honest. And also on the Iris Nebula, you can see the the outline of it. And yeah, this is a single image. And as you can see, the, the vignette is pretty strong due to the uh, stretch. But of course I did, um, after my session, I did flats to correct the vignetting and also all the dust spots on the sensor. I did uh, 30 of them each and also darks and bias frames and now this is the linear uncalibrated image and now we'll switch to the calibrated image and now you can see the true image. Um, as you can see the vignette got corrected out pretty good or perfect um, and you can even see more dust lanes now. And yeah, this is the single image and this is um, seven images combined or stacked and now you can see a lot more. Um, first of all, you can see a strong um, gradient, what I removed uh, later and you can see <laughs> these dark dust lanes, they are so strong now and really good defined, which is pretty amazing. And yeah, after that, um, I cropped the image because as you can see, the image is not perfectly aligned because I did that my images. So I, um, after all four images, I moved um, or the program um, moved the, uh, the field of view slightly that um, the noise pattern changes a little bit um, and I, that I have a little bit more variation in the images to um, calibrate the noise out better and yeah I I cut out the edges of the frame to get only the good portion of the image and after that I used in the tools tab the remove light pollution to correct the light gradient and also to get an even flat field and now you can really see how good this looks. I mean, for six hours um, on a good dark sky, on a moderately last, moderately fast um, telescope and f6 refractor telescope, 80 millimeter, it's it's really good. Um, or, <laughs> in other words, it is perfect. Um, I actually thought it would be worse, but um, this is really impressive so far. And yeah, after that, I use the calibrate star colors tool to calibrate the colors in the image and now it looks it looks really natural it actually is a bit more greenish um, it has a little green uh, color cast to it on the overall image but i will correct it in pixel inside later on and yeah that's pretty much all i did in this program here in astro pixel processor and i would say let's move on to pixel inside Okay, so now we are in PixInsight. Let me just quickly load the image. So now we have the image here. As you can see, it is black um, because um, this is the true raw image and raw images are always black in the, um, in the general preview. When I open the histogram transformation um, and select the the image then you can see that the histogram is pretty flat or um, 
it is a really thin line only you you should have um you, you should see a um a, i would say a big mountain <laughs> of the histogram um when you have the image stretched but this is a linear image so there's no there has been no stretch applied for now um what we will do later of course and what we will do now is to stretch the image but only as a preview and as you can see when i open the transfer histogram transformation again i've selected the image so that i can see the image uh, his, uh, histogram but the histogram hasn't changed so we are working on a preview here and that's what we want to do for noise reduction because that is the first step or um, generally that i do before stretching my image and when I zoom in a bit, you can see that there is a little bit of color noise in there. And that's the first thing that I would like to remove. So first of all, I will create a, a little preview. Um, I normally include a bit of um, a bit of the object or a bit of uh, like nebulae in, in the image and also background sky to have a good comparison of uh, what it will look later on in the image when I apply it to the full image. And yeah, I think let's start. Um, I will use the multi-scale median transform process for my for my stretching, uh, not for my stretching. Sorry, for my um, for my noise reduction. And what I will do first is I will try to um, reduce the chrominance noise so, so the all the the purple and green ish colors um, in the background of the sky okay so how i will do this um, you have in this or generally in um, in this multi-scale multi-scale uh, transform in the median or in the linear transform you have um, layers uh, of the image to apply different noise reductions and what this means is that um, well, first of all I, I should say that um, that I'm not an expert of Pixinsight I've all, only used this program for like two months now and not that often of, uh, to be honest because I only used it for like uh, two wide-angle images and uh, two deep sky images or maybe maybe three and so I'm not extremely um, experienced with this program but I think I, I should I should have a good idea of what I'm doing now and what I want to say is that um, if something is like not that accurate or um, doesn't sound that um, how, how should I call it shall sound um, like logical <laughs> then again um, excuse me but um, yeah I will do my best and just just watch what I do <laughs> um, okay so I have um, the chrominance noise target as, as a target set and I will do the th uh, I will push the threshold up to about five per channel or per layer not channel and these channels um, they describe what kind of noise I want to affect in the in the pro in the process because noise is um, split up in like high frequency noise low frequency noise and the difference is like you have these these darker parts of the image uh, or like the more cri I, would, I would call it crispy noise like sharp noise um, with high contrast this is the um, high frequency noise and um, if you have like these like big blobs of colors or like uh, more even flats um, flat surfaces of noise that's like the low um, low frequency noise and on these layers I can just um, set in what I want to um, affect so what I did on my previous edit I or what I do normally is I only do on uh, three the first three layers I apply my noise reduction and I think we should see we should look what it does okay so the process has finished and as you can see in the before and after 
the color noise got reduced significantly. So that's what I want. And I think this is good enough. Um, these settings are, they are usually fine for me, or especially in this image, this, this worked pretty good. And so that I used this on the preview image um, and it worked, I can just apply it on the entire image. Okay, so now that the color noise is reduced, I can focus on the luminance noise. So we'll just reset all my settings and just go to the luminance noise. And now I will try to smooth out of the um, noise a little bit. And I will again only apply them on the um, first three layers. And what I usually do or what in my experience is the um, um, the first layer what it does is to reduce these harsh high contrasty noise parts these uh, like darker pixels and I will pull up the push up the threshold to like four but I will reduce the amount um, to like 0.3 and like I will do I, I will never do the full amount when uh, when I do um, processes in Pixinsight because I think the full amount is a bit too much. Um, but in the first one, I know that 30% or I would say like 35 is good enough or it, it, it's, it's not too aggressive, um, but it will do a, a good job. And on the other one, I will also increase the uh, threshold a little bit. So let's try. Let's try that out. Okay, and now as you can see the image got smoothed out quite a bit. Before and after. And I would actually say that it is a bit too strong, so I will reduce the amount a little bit and just just do it again. Okay, now it looks better. Now it looks really good in my opinion. It it's not too smooth. And I actually will do it a little bit less, just 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 a, just a tiny bit. Okay, now 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 it's good. And with that setting that I have here, I will just apply it to the full image. Okay, so now our image is um, nice reduced. I would call it. <laughs> um, the next thing that I would do is or at least on um, on my computer screen now, the image looks a bit green-ish. And what I will do to remove that is I will use a process called SCNR. And what it does, it like it, it's, it's, uh, it says to remove green. <laughs> and that's really a powerful tool. Um, it's, such, it's so simple, but it works really good. So I will just apply it to the image and now all the green colors are gone, so that's perfect. Um, yeah, okay. Okay, so now what I want to do is um, I, will s I want to stretch the image. Um, and I would do my stretching um, most of the times uh, with the Arxin stretch. And what the Arxin stretch does especially good is this stretch um, contains uh, the color data really good on the image because when you stretch your images like when you when I do the uh, preview stretch this is approximately the stretch how it will look when I use the um, why did I close it use the histogram transformation and um, this is what it looks what it would look like when I do the stretch with the curves in here and to be honest, this is really flat. So the colors are washed out and you have almost no colors in the stars. And also the stars are really, like they are fat and big. So the, the image is full of stars, um, that's obvious. But what I can do with the Arxen stretch, I have the control over the, um, over the HDR capabilities of the image because this stretch um, will will preserve the uh, highlights from blowing out too much, but it will also contain the color data of the image. Um, so I will just show you. So I will turn on the live view, the live uh, real time preview, 
and I will just push the stretch factor and estimate the black point and then I will reduce that so that the blacks are not too black and then I will push it again so okay when you see like like for example when you look at these stars these stars are really colorful now this one is is, is really orange this is this one is blue this one is blue is, is blue as well and also the the center of the iris nebula it is really detailed detailed there's no almost no um like like uh, it's not too bright and when i okay sorry when i compare it to this one you can see that the stars they are bigger of course and they have no color or i mean they have color but it's it's really washed out and also the um the center of the iris nebula is is also really bright and that's not what i want i want to get in high dynamic range and also get the, the best colors i can get of the image i want the true color what i can get of the image so i have my settings here on the arcs and stretch i will just apply them okay and what i will do now is just do it again because the image is not stretched enough I, I, I would never do actually um because what i do what i um what i don't want to do is to apply the full stretch on on one edit like i want to do it in multiple steps i think that's uh, better for the image i actually don't know if if it, if it is better but um in my opinion it, i think it helps a bit okay so I will do the black point again and stretch it a bit more, maybe, maybe like this. Push the black point a bit more. So I think this this looks good. Okay, so I will close the preview again and just apply it. And now we are talking. This is a really good image from my current standpoint. This is really good. When I zoom in, you have all these brownish colors from the um, from the dark nebulae you have the star colors well preserved the the center of the iris nebula is, is really defined and not um, not blown out and yeah, the, the image just looks it looks good it looks just good and the only thing that's left for now is um, to apply a bit of star reduction because I think the image is a bit bit um, filled with stars or a bit too much filled with stars and I, but I would want I don't want to like um, reduce them too aggressively so that I have left like an almost um, star net free image but I just want to um, bring them a bit a bit more in the background and what I will do first is I will apply a star mask on the image so I use these settings Usually, usually, um, I also did. Um, I used these Im uh, settings on the um, first edit attempt on my image, and this, these settings look, uh, they are fine for me. So I'll just apply them, and then the program will create a mask for me. Okay, now we have our mask here, and when I zoom in. You can see that all the white points are protecting or like they are masked out the stars and that's what i want i just want the stars to be affected and i would just apply that mask to the image and then when we zoom in you can see that only the stars are affected by the mask which is pretty good and now we will just um disable the or uh, not disable I, I will just hide the mask and now i will go on to the morphological transformation this is the process um, that you can use in pixinsight to do the star minimization and for the operator i generally use the um, erosion minimum that's that's the way to go for me uh, that works fine and i use the size of seven for the uh, structuring element and I think uh, the amount of uh, 100 or like 1 is too much, so I, I always reduce it to 0.4-ish. That's that's only um, that's uh, always good for me. And I will apply that. 
and now the stars got a little bit minimized and I show you the before and after you can see it and that's actually the only thing the well not, well not the only thing that's um, um, just a just a subtle change um, on the image but I just don't want to reduce the stars too much I, I like I like stars in the image even when they are like too much but um, I will never want to um, reduce them so hard that I that they are like non-existent but yeah this is actually all what I want to do in Pix and Sai. let me just remove the the preview close this this is the image that I got from Pix and Sai. Um yeah I my my approach um, usually is or my target is that um, you should get a good image with the um, with the um, what did I know? what is the word what is the world um, okay never mind I, what I want to say is that you don't want to put in too much effort in the editing process to get a good image that's what I wanted to say so I sit here for like 30 minutes and uh, I got a perfect image for now. Um, I still have to do a little bit more things in Photoshop, um, but when I do it like uh, when I'm focused and I would get this um, this image in like 10 minutes and this is a good result in my opinion. Okay, so let's move on to Photoshop. Okay, so now we are on the final steps um, in Photoshop. I've already loaded in the image as you can see and the first thing that I um, want to do is to reduce the amount of color noise in the background but because this as you can see there are a lot of uh, magenta and purple um, discolorations in the background and I want to remove that because that's like <laughs> that's not natural and it, um, it doesn't look that good um, what you can use or what I normally use is, is the color noise reduction in the uh, camera raw filter but when I apply it just straight on the image you can see maybe when I zoom in that you lose all the star information the star colors um, and that's not really good um, because I want to uh, I want to protect the star colors because they are a good a good thing in the image. And how I just uh, apply that to the background is that I just generate a star mask or a highlight mask. Um, and I choose here and the color range, filter setting, the highlights, and then I will just apply that to the brightest parts of the image so that I can protect the stars from being affected and now I will just apply that and invert the mask so that the, the only the stars are like cut out and now I can apply the color noise reduction on the, the image but on this time the stars are protected so yeah the stars are more or less protected now okay so now that I have done this I will just flatten down the image and next thing I would like to do is I want to boost the the fainter dust lanes in the image or the fainter dust uh, structures in the image and how I do that is I already um, took this image and made it starless yeah so this is the starless version of the image and what I will do now I just copy it on top of this image and now as you can see it reduced the stars or like not reduced it removed the stars um, the program that I used um, the program is called starless uh, starless starnet plus plus by the way and with this image I can just apply 
the dark dust lanes like on top of the uh, already existing image and on that uh, what this does is well I sh will show you so I will generate a group and then I will put on a levels adjustment on the image and I will set the group on screen and now when I for example just pull down the black point at the far back you can see there is no difference on the image but when I pull back the black slider you can see at a certain point that all the nebulae they get brighter but only the nebulae all the stars are not affected because I use the starless image and I think because when I do it full it will apply on the entire image but I will only use it on the dust lanes of the image and I think I will keep it on 76 and that's good so when you see the before and after here you can see that it's it does make a good job actually I will just pull it back a little bit more because now it will also affect on the really faint objects okay so that's that's good now we'll flatten down the image again and now I will adjust the black point because the image overall is pretty bright and when I do a levels adjustment you can see that there is a lot of empty space on the black side of the image and I will just push the black slider a bit more to the histogram edge to get a darker and more contrasty image and I think this looks good for now yeah um, actually there is nothing really I can do more um, the only thing what they will do now is like more cosmetic um, in my general, my personal taste, this nebula is a bit too red, so I will just do a, a selective um, color adjustment and pull down the cyan and in the on the slider. This will decrease the amount of red that is in the image. So I think this looks good um, because all these dark lanes they are not red they are they have the they they should be more brownish and i think on this way um i keep them more brownish okay and the next thing that i can do what i notice now is that i have a little bit of magenta on the edges and they are also a little bit darker um i think that the um remove light pollution um, function in Astro Pixel Processor worked not that well on the edges, so I will just um, correct them by myself. So I will do with the lasso. Yep, I will just just um, do a mask around the parts that I think that I that should be affected. And then I will do a hue saturation um, adjustment and we'll just pull down the saturation on the magentas, but not like 100%, but, but I think that's because I think that's too much because um, what I will do instead is I'll just keep it to like 70 or 60 and I will just change the hue of the color magenta because that will put it in more like in the background or it will will make the um, select part not look strange if you know what I mean okay so I think this looks good and yeah the only thing that I will do now is just pull it pull the, the lightness a bit up or just make it brighter because the edges are a bit darker here and but now I have to 
put in a little bit of feather on the mask uh, so that the the um, the uh, what's it called? Um, the edge is not too sharp. Okay, so actually that's that's my final result of the image. Um, as I said, I don't want to put in that too much effort in um, in the post processing to get a good image because the the only thing the only thing that you, that you can do to get a really good image or better image is just to to collect enough light or get uh, good enough data to work with. Um, I got like, this is probably the hardest thing to capture, like these, these dark nebulae, they are not um, emitting light, they are just reflecting the light, so they are pretty faint. And to get such a good signal in just six hours of capturing is, <laughs> is really insane and um, I can guarantee you that if you did this, um, like, or if you, if you try this on a not really dark sky or with uh, bad equipment, you won't get an image like that. You will get a noisy shit, <laughs> if I can call that, uh, if, if I can call it so. Um, I, can, I can just give you the advice to, to collect enough light. And when you have enough light, you get a really good image, like straight out of, uh, straight off the, um, stacking program. Like when I go back to Astro Pixel Processor, you can see that I got this from the stacking program. It, this is like almost no editing at all and you can already see so much in it and when you have an image like this, then you know that after the processing the image is good and when you see this you know that you don't have to do much in the processing. Um, yeah, I think that's it to be honest. I'll just go back to Photoshop and show you the image here. Yeah, that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that you learned something maybe. And um, for like future videos, I want to do um, a bit more of this these kind of videos. I want to do um, editing videos on wide angle images as well. And I also want to do like some videos about like more behind the scenes, um, not like vlogging style, but um, I just want to show you a little bit um, like when I'm on the road or um, when I'm on location and capturing the images. I want to share that as well with you because that's that's the fun part of the entire hobby, I would say. But yeah, leave a comment or something um, down below. I don't know. Um, tell me if, if you. Uh, like the image and um, if you learn something and yeah see you in the next video